And we are live. See you guys. <laughs> See you. Harry Jaggard, professional idiot from England with a keen interest in exploring the world and helping others earn freedom. <laughs> professional <laughs> idiot. That's me, brother. I just like thought I don't want to take myself too seriously. And I actually have a habit of just doing stupid things all the time. So I feel like that's a good way of me being able to like uh, make sense of it. So, because you do like silly things all the time. Yeah, I'm just clumsy, and people yeah. always make stupid comments like, "Oh, you did this wrong, you did this wrong." So, um, yeah, just don't take myself too seriously. So one day you just, you just decided to hold up a GoPro to yourself and start recording yourself being an idiot, and here you are, 500,000 subscribers later, a million followers on on Facebook within like a year and a half. Is that, is that accurate or just said? Uh, yeah, pretty accurate, yeah. <laughs> Sounds crazy when you say that. That is mental. Like, uh, you must be probably one of the fastest growing travel creators in the world. Uh, potentially, but I feel like actually now it's one of the easiest times to grow because of the short form video. I was just like, just before short form, and now, yeah, it's very easy to grow on social media. But like, yes, I appreciate the kind words. That, I mean, two years ago, you were an administrator for Slam Transport in oh, Coventry. Oh, you've done some digging. You've done some digging. <laughs> oh, only wow. two years ago. I'm getting flashbacks, PTSD. <laughs> um, like, when you're, working, when you're working for Slam in Coventry, when did you realize, oh, there's a great opportunity on YouTube and I'm going to go 100% on this? Yeah, uh, it was like... Oh, do you want the long story or the short story? Um, just, just, just keep it what we need to just like a short right. is best. So like, yeah, I was just, I did what society expected me to do. I went to university, got, got decent grades, went and did a finance job, which is the one you're talking about. And I just hated it. I absolutely hated it. And I, I, to be fair, like content creation wasn't in my kind of frame of mind at that point. But I thought I cannot be doing this for the rest of my life. So I, uh, during COVID, I actually... Uh, moved to Dubai to become a videographer, fell in love with just making videos, started making TikToks. So TikTok was actually the first platform that I post on. Oh, so you are, you are originally yeah. a TikToker. <laughs> wow. I, I was. Just, just like myself, I started on TikTok. Oh, nice. And, yeah. Yeah, so snap. I feel like TikTok is is a really good way to like build your confidence because it's so easy to grow on TikTok. Um, but yeah, started making TikToks. They did really well. I was actually not making TikToks. Like the content that I make now is completely different. Like music comparisons and movie comparisons and funny videos just completely different but they were doing quite well so I was like you know what? I'm enjoying this I want to make more videos at the same time I got into actual videography like using cameras and yep. and making cinematic films fell in love with it became a, a, a freelance videographer quit my job I was like I'm not doing that job anymore it's terrible like I just hated it and then that is when I became friends with uh, a youtuber called uh, World Nomad. Uh, from the USA in Dubai and he kind of just like showed me uh, the way of YouTube and how it works. He invited me on a trip. I've always loved to travel and then he invited me on a trip to Pakistan and it sounds crazy but literally we, we, we did go to Jordan, uh, the country, uh, a few uh, just before it but then went to Pakistan. First few videos started doing really well and then like I think within 10 days of uploading on, on YouTube I became monetized. And then when I got monetized, I was like, I'm going tunnel vision, full, full speed ahead and uh, uploaded every day for 10 months on YouTube. Every single day you would make a, a long form YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some like 20 minutes, some 40 minutes long. How are you still alive? <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's my question. Uh, but your first, when you really started taking off was in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pakistan. So you actually titled your first Pakistan video, UK tourist travels to Karachi, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And and you started the video saying you had no idea what to expect, but you've been looking forward to it for a long time. Is, is that, were you actually looking forward to going to Pakistan? And wh why Pakistan in particular, out of any country <laughs> in the world? Well, it was planned like 
a month or two months before. So I, I didn't actually know we were going to Pakistan, but I think I meant by that, like I was just looking forward to traveling to a, 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 f a new country that I had never been to. And I really did not know anything about Pakistan before. Now I know so much. I've been back twice. I've been back once, sorry, twice in total. Um, so I didn't know anything about the place. And it was actually my friend Max's idea to go. I'm not 100% sure how he decided to go. It was just opening up from the pandemic. So I think there was not actually that many countries we could travel to. So many countries were closed. And I think he saw Pakistan's opening. Let's just go. Like, it seems like a really cool country. And also, he focuses on countries that have got a bad reputation, but should deserve a better reputation. So we were like... Yeah, so do go. you feel like that actually worked in your advantage, the fact that you didn't know much about the country mm. itself? You went there like as a free spirit almost? Yeah. You just wanted to document and learn as much as you could about this new country. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like uh, just a fresh new culture. It was a complete culture shock. I'd never been to South Asia. I've been to Southeast Asia, just Thailand, but Thailand and Pakistan, completely, completely different yeah. countries. And for me, I'd never been treated the way I've been treated in Pakistan. Even the second time I went back, it was way more uh, hospitable, but it was literally the, the hospitality I've never experienced in my life. And especially coming from the West, where like hospitality isn't huge in the West at all, I'd say, like you kind of keep to yourself. And I was used to that, especially from being from England, that everyone's just like polite and keeps themselves. But then in Pakistan, people paying for me, like everything was being paid for, everyone inviting me into their homes. And I was just like completely shocked. And just like, I guess that came up across well on camera. Like I was so surprised. and. Uh, it just did really well. It was just like great timing. Not many tourists were going there, so it was very new to everyone. There you go. You, you found almost like a, I suppose, a gap in the market, or you found your, your niche and you yeah. found something which no one else was doing at the time. And you just went, you know, head first. Exactly. You dived head first into it, and, and now <laughs> you've grown to <laughs> yeah. this monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did not Let's, foresee that happening. So um, let's just go back a couple years back. What do I what do I need to know about you for why you why it makes sense that you became so successful in such a short period of time? I'd say just being all around handsome, adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, why do you need to know? Uh, like, what, look, how like, I got to like, where like, I am? if you were looking back at your your life, or at least like the last ten years, does it make? Does it feel like some? Some uh, pieces are like coming together. Mm. I was like, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense for why you've b become successful now. Like, is say, any, uh, do you have, did you have like any traits or anything that you were doing in your past? I'd say one thing that like jumps out is that my, my parents always used to say that I, when I was younger, I would tell them that I'm not going to have a boss when I'm older. And they were like, you used to tell your parents. Yeah. That. Yeah. I was like, I, I don't want to have a boss. Like I, I don't. And they were like, are you joking? Like, of course you've got to have a boss. And even like, they come to me recently and they're saying like, oh yeah, you were actually right. You don't have a boss now. And I guess it's just like, just the unwilling, it sounds a bit maybe arrogant, but unwillingness to like go down the traditional path of uh, getting a job and, and living normally. Um, and obviously I don't want to sugarcoat not having a boss. Obviously it brings its own uh, risks and there is a lot of danger. Like I don't have protection, like health protection or uh, like a pension, but obviously, there's, there's benefits as well. But yeah, I'd say that. And I've always been maybe adventurous and not like breaking the rules, but like just doing things that other people wouldn't necessarily do, I guess. You know, speaking to people that have come on this show, everyone has their own, in some way, they say, they say the same sort of things. Oh, really? It's always the same sort of things people say like, I didn't want to you know, go down a specific path. They didn't want to be told what to do. It was like, I don't want to work for someone else. There's always, these this same words keep com coming back on. Yeah. So I find it really fascinating. You, you saying almost exactly the same thing which like Susan was saying last, um, last week. And I suppose your friends back at home, you're from Coventry. For you guys who, for you guys who don't know what, what Coventry is, it's like Best a... Best city in England, actually. <laughs> it's a, it's Voted. A... No, I'm joking. It's a terrible city. <laughs> I've been there once. I used to watch... <laughs> My team, Reading FC, play Coventry at Riku Arena. Oh, God. I had a little tour of Coventry and questionable. <laughs> but, Very. like, what, what, what do your friends... Are you still in contact with your friends? And, like, what do, what do they say? What, what do they, like, 
Do, do we, how are we even comprehending what you're doing right now? They're, they're as shocked as anyone, I think. Like, I'm, I'm as shocked as anyone. I think, like, when I was younger, I wasn't very confident. Um, so I wouldn't, like, a YouTuber is, sp like, typically known as someone who's, like, quite confident. So I don't think they would have put me in the box of a, a YouTuber. But they, they just said, like, I, I guess probably the traits that I have is I'm not... I'm not particularly talented, I wouldn't say, but I'd say I'm very determined and I believe in myself. And probably the number one thing above talent is I'm hardworking. So although in my finance job, I wasn't very particularly, you know, like the number one employee, but when I became a freelance videographer, which was working for myself, doing client work, I was working so hard um, because, you know, the, the work I put in was the, the money that I was earning myself. So yeah, hard working. And so I guess, you know, they, they were surprised, but they're very happy for me. And just like, yeah, always like rooting for me and yeah, like really good people, so. Has, has there been like a, you know, a light bulb moment that happened when you thought, when you realized that this, this can be a career for me, this, I could be doing this for the rest of my life. Has, is there any particular moment that stands out? In the past mm. <laughs> short year and a half. <laughs> I'd say I didn't fully believe that I could be a full-time content creator until I hit 100,000 on YouTube. And I'd say that that was a bit like late. I think I definitely could have when I was like maybe 40 or 50. But for me, I needed to get to 100 to be like, okay, yeah, this is real. Because like out, when I went to Pakistan, like the growth was so quick. And I was like, you know... What if, what if I had no one from, what if I go to a different country and they don't watch me? And I did actually go to Colombia and they, I didn't do very well. And I was like, you know, anxiety, like, oh, you know, maybe I should, you know, do the videography again. But I was like, no, this is the only way. Like, and I, that's why I was uploading every day because I was just like, there's, this is like, I, this is like such a perfect opportunity. So I thought I'd go for it. But yeah, 100K on YouTube is probably when I was like, yeah, this is definitely it. And you also get that nice plaque to, yeah. you know, which you can put on your wall and be like, yeah, this is what I'm doing it. Exactly. And that's why I see YouTube as being so unique compared to other social media platforms. Like when I hit 100, 100K or even a million on TikTok, it was like, yeah, wow, this is great. But when I hit 100K on YouTube, I was like, yeah, I can see this every single day. I earned this and it like translates for online following, which I have to the real, to the real world. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah, so that's why, yeah, I love YouTube, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally like YouTube over any other social media platform. Obviously, TikTok, I'd say, is also a great if you're a starting creator. Some people can, can do really well on TikTok, but for me, YouTube is just the best by far. Facebook is like literally the worst social media ever. Not, it's your not best just platform. to use. It's my best platform, uh, and it's like maybe 40% of my income, but I hate it. Like, the customer service is terrible. I hope they're not listening. <laughs> no, I love Facebook. No, um, Cancel. <laughs> but uh, just like it makes me so grateful for YouTube and their customer service and just like the, the way the algorithm works and the way they treat their creators is just 10 times better yeah and also like the growth of I think the growth of YouTube is still going I think it's still got a long way to go absolutely this is still very early days people were saying four years ago how it's, it's already reached a peak and I was just going to go there's going to be something else but it's just, it's, it's just going to mm. be exponential in my opinion anyway yeah. I remember literally watching uh, YouTube videos when I was like I had zero subscribers about how like you know can you still become a creator a YouTube creator yeah. and uh, so if anyone's watching this and thinking oh you know is YouTube too saturated it's like absolutely not zero percent chance like you can still be good and uh, big on YouTube if you're making great videos so do you have like a, a piece of advice you could give someone that might be watching in Jakarta and Indonesia right now who wants to, you know, get into this, into this uh, career of being a content creator. What advice, if you could I give them one loads. piece of advice. You're, you're, if you could give maybe your top, your top three or your number one. I'd say number one, which is like, I've done a bit of consulting for people who want to become YouTubers. And I'd say the number one thing is to take action. So many people want to become, they come to me and they say, and they say, oh, you know, Harry, I really want to become a YouTuber. I just, I, I love what you're doing. And I'm like, okay, how many videos have you, have you made? And they're like, oh, I've not made any, but I'm planning to make some. I was like, okay, make a video and then learn from it and then make another video and make loads of videos. Like I only became a good YouTuber. I wasn't a good YouTuber when I was making videos in Pakistan, I don't think for the first time, but I made videos for 10 months. I don't know how many videos that is, but it's hundreds of videos. And by the end of it, I was a vlogger, like I was good. So you gotta 
quantity over quality to start off with, and then when you're bigger, you can focus on quality. Um, take action. Um, so a lot of people are scared because they don't think they're confident. You know, a lot of people think you need to be the most confident person, and I'd say absolutely not. It's the same. Like if you make videos, you will become more confident. And the other thing is like the, just the two main things for YouTube videos in general is watch time and click through rate, which is basically how many times people click on the video. So make really do not underestimate the thumbnail and the title, like really don't under, underestimate them and also try and get people to watch to the end. And there's so many free YouTube videos you can watch online. You don't need to take a course on how to do that. Yeah. Or just listen to this podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or buy my course. No, I'm joking. Exactly. I don't, I don't have, have you got any courses? <laughs> no, 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 no. I do like uh, consulting for, for YouTubers. I'm not doing any at the moment, but mm. I, I used to do it sometimes. But I'll just give free advice out. I don't, I don't really care. Like, I just, I, uh, I enjoy helping people. And right now, I just love making videos. So, Do you have a particular video which really stands out for you? So say if, if mm. I was to delete every single video on your YouTube channel right now, apart from one video, <laughs> which one would it be and why? From my most recent series in Nepal. Um, well, no, no, no. It, every from your whole YouTube no, no, channel. No, no, it is. I'm saying it's, oh, it it's, it's definitely from this one. Like, I've definitely slowly increased the quality of my videos, I believe, um, to the point where, like, yeah, my last Nepal series, I was really, really happy with. And um, I'd say it's really hard. Probably it's called This Is How They Treat You in Nepal. That's my favorite video. Or uh, living 96 hours with a Nepali family. Because that was like real Nepal, real experience. Like just having an amazing time living with a family. Like it doesn't really get much better for me. That's true travel. I don't think traveling to like a, a random like sightseeing spot or going to a, a viewpoint is, is that like travel. I think going and seeing how the people live is real travel. Especially if it makes you spicy noodles. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> those are the spiciest noodles I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and, and what is it about that which really, <clears throat> like, excites you? You know, you, you, like, spending 96 hours with a family in Nepal, what is it about that which you love? I love the fact that no other tourists have done that before. I love the fact that that's, like, as close as you can get as, as, like, actually, you know, living or, like, living with them long term. I don't know, I just feel like so connected to them, learning exactly how they were living, their, their hospitality towards me. And also like something that really just blew my mind was how hard they were working. I like come from a small town in England where most people just work uh, nine to five office jobs. It's pretty easy life, I guess. Um, and they were working so hard. Like the females were working harder, like so, so hard. The, the males were going to, uh, like the Gulf countries, Saudi Arabia, they go and work for a few years. The females take over the jobs, farming, agriculture, waking up at six every single day. Like there's no, you can't take a day off there. And it was just like so inspiring. And I think I, I learned so much from that trip and yeah, made me realize that like you can live a lot more simple and happy life. That's a bit of a contrast to your most popular video, which is a crazy $10 challenge in Delhi. Yeah. Which is like, it's a 50 minute video. It's got about 3 million views. So based on what you were just, just saying to me, I feel like it's completely a bit different. Yeah. Spending time with a family compared to a, like a challenge video. Which one do you, I'm guessing you prefer spending time with a family and getting these really personal relationships with them. Mm -hmm. How important is it to, but at the same time, this challenge video got maybe, it gets more views. So which which one sh should you go for and... If as a creator starting out, which one should they, you know, try to do? Yeah. More chasing of views or something which is more personal to them? Yeah. It's a good, great question. Absolutely great question. I would say you want to find the middle between, say there's like a, two semicircles. One circle is making content that performs really well. One, one circle is uh, videos that perform really well, that get millions of views. And one is like videos you love to make and you want to be in the middle of that. Like you don't want to be making videos that you love to make, but then no one's going to watch them. Like, I don't know, like me cooking something. Like I, no one would want to watch me I'm cooking. I'm sure people would want to watch you. <laughs> I'm a terrible Especially cook. Especially with a so. new haircut. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then 
for example, yeah, ten dollar challenges is something that you know I enjoyed making. I didn't love making it. it wasn't like oh my god this is amazing it was like actually pretty cool because it was in old delhi which is just a super intense place to go but yeah i'd say in the middle is like my new videos and and i only started making these types of videos in nepal it's like a new direction for my channel so yeah it was like uh my my interest in videos has, has tra changed over the last year because that was filmed over a year ago i think yeah um so like my advice would be to tr just try and like make videos that are suitable for what you love and what the audience will love obviously you don't want to be making videos that the audience loves that you don't want to make but also what the algorithm wants as well yeah so i, I would so say I, I, I see it as like a triangle personally it's like what you want to make what the algorithm wants to make uh wants you to make and what the audience wants to see mm -hmm. so for me it's like a you know a triangle yeah that's very true but i would also say that the algorithm and the audience are very similar and that's what youtube like i've watched videos with the people the actual um employees of youtube and they they try and tell people you should not try and think oh you know the algorithm it's like this magical thing it's like treat the algorithm like the audience it's very similar so you know i would highly recommend to p for people to learn who is their target audience and this is something that i only discovered uh, recently it's like really understanding your target audience and then you can really make videos for them before I was just making videos of whatever I thought was cool and what would get views but now I really understand my target audience I believe okay so so your a really important thing for you is to really understand what your audience wants to see and how you can adapt your content for their to them hit to hit the like button I suppose exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and watch your content for the longest possible time yeah. for them to enjoy it yeah, people. Don't, I think people think that the like button and comments and that is super helpful, but it's nowhere near as helpful as them watching to the end. Yeah. So if anyone's watching my videos, definitely watch to the end. <laughs> but <laughs> mine, are, mine are like 59 minutes long, so... Yeah, it's a long luck. time. But I mean, it's definitely, it's a, it's a journey. It's, it's, mm. like, it's like reading a book. Yeah, and that's, that's another great piece of advice. We're, this is probably a little bit like maybe advanced for people who are just starting, mm -hmm. but like um, really learn storytelling. Um, and obviously it's very hard to tell a story in a vlog because you don't know what's gonna happen when you're vlogging, but you can kind of, there are some some uh, theories and stuff you can learn about storytelling and it will definitely help you. Yeah. Was there anyone that you, I, I guess, looked up to or get in, got inspiration from when starting your journey? Because you are saying how you just, I suppose, making videos, what you wanted to make initially, but to make those videos, you'd have to have some sort of inspiration for why you're making those videos in the first place. So if there was like a one or one or two creators that you really, that really stand out in your mind, who, who would they be and why? Yeah, so I'm, I've got a really nice fr friendship group of uh, creators. And one of them, like Luke and Mac mm -hmm. and Ali, their names are, I go with Ali, Luke DeMant and World No Mac. And they're, they're kind of my, like my inspiration. Um, we're all great friends, make very similar content, just going to different countries and, and doing kind of uh, similar content in those countries. And so I'd say, yeah, they definitely uh, paved the way. Also, like the big ones, like uh, Bolden Bankrupt is huge and he's like the number one in my niche. And he, he, he basically made, I guess he probably made the niche that we're in at the moment. And, and he kind of paved the way for all the creators. And now, like he was, I don't know, like five years ago, making started making videos. Now, there's so many people making my type of videos. So that's why I feel like I'm wanting to slightly change my content just because this, like I got, I got, I have a, a creator community of just like uh, creators who are, are travel creators. And someone was saying about how like they went on their homepage feed and all the videos were the same like all these travel videos, same titles, same thumbnails. So like, there's definitely a need for things to change a little bit, but still the travel niche is huge. People love it, so. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you're saying how many, there's so many people doing these, these, these sort of videos right now, but what makes you so special? Why, why, why are you still doing so well compared to so many of these other creators? What is it about you? What is it about your content? What is it about, why you? Well, I. I ask myself the same question. I'm just a normal guy from a small village in England. But no, I think I probably would say, honestly, it's it's not my personality, I don't think. It's not me. I'd say I have learnt, I've literally absorbed all the knowledge that I could on 
how to make great videos and use that. I don't, I don't think I would put, put much down to my personality. I would say it's more making great titles that people click on, making great thumbnails. There's like people always underestimate. If you look at all the, all the vloggers who are not performing very well, I could tell them pretty much straight away, it's your thumbnail, that's the reason why. Because I've had people I did consulting for, and then I got them to use my thumbnail editor. I was like, you use my thumbnail editor, editor, and then instantly their views went up. And then also just like making videos that people actually want to watch. And sometimes people make content just for the sake of making content to be watched, but they don't actually uh, want to make that content. So like really getting creative with the video ideas. I'd say that's one thing that I've, I've definitely done better than others. Do you, provide any, do you provide any services for, so if there's someone watching right now who wants to make YouTube videos, do you provide any services like for making thumbnails or editing uh, or anything like that yourself? Or like if, if people DM me, I can definitely send them my thumbnail editor. But like, it's, not, it's not a business for, for you? No, 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 it's, he, he gets paid like I pay him. Um, he's from the Maldives actually, so it's okay. pretty interesting. Um, oh wow. That's, yeah, yeah that's really, he, he actually came to me and that's like another thing is like, maybe people are watching who are editors or like this, there's, there's not just, you don't have to become a, a content creator. You could become an, an editor or a thumbnail editor. There's so many jobs that are like, all someone needs to do is, my email is in the YouTube description. All they need to do is email me, send me some work, and I will literally hire them straight away if they're good enough. But look, I get emails and people are like, hey, I wanna work for you. But they don't send me any examples, so I just delete it straight away. Like, it's not, yeah, you, gotta, you gotta really provide me value. And so, yeah, there's definitely so many opportunities. And uh, yeah, for if someone wants services, I guess, thumbnail editing. And also if someone just, I don't actually get the, that many DMs saying like, hey, could you give me an advice on X? If someone says, hey, could you just check my video? I'll, I'll do it for free. Like I don't, I don't care about stuff like that. But, <laughs> you're, gonna get, you're gonna get influx of messages <laughs> after this, yeah. 100%. I didn't think about that. But <laughs> no, I'll try and help out as many people as possible. But yeah, no, I feel like, um, if you ask, if you don't ask, you don't get. And, exactly. and so that's the one the thing I learned when I was a videographer. I moved to Dubai and I had zero clients and I was not the greatest videographer. So I DM'd a hundred fitness uh, personal trainers and was like, I'll make you a video for free. And like 10 of them replied. And then I started working with them and then started charging them. And, and that's how I became a videographer. So right. like Instagram DMs are so powerful so powerful you can dm anyone in the world like yeah. you could dm donald trump and he might reply it's, it's crazy <laughs> that's exactly how i got my biggest my biggest clients in london they had a podcast they were doing uh, in the technology niche i i dm'd for podcast not knowing as part of this huge umbrella company and because I, I did this video for free for them they gave me their whole clientele Wow. And I was like, I, I was shooting every, like, literally every single day I was doing shoots in London, making good money. And that's what, that's what enabled me to go to Bali. Just because I messaged, I DM'd a podcast of like 600 followers saying, hey, I'd love to come in and film your podcast and for free. No way. It's, it's quite crazy. It's a very similar story then. <laughs> yeah, literally like, I think doing free work is so underrated. Yeah. Because then I've done free work as a videographer like five times and every single time I got paid work from it. Exactly. So yeah, like you just got to have a bit of initiative. But my parents were not very happy when I was there. So <laughs> every single time I'd do like a, a free gig, it's like how much are you getting paid for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd sometimes even have to lie that yeah. I was getting paid for it. I was so embarrassed. And I had, another, I had a job on the side working in a cafe trying to build this thing up. Yeah, it's a very similar story. Like I didn't want to admit that I was doing free work, mm -hmm. but it's so, so valuable. Absolutely. But obviously you can't get like taken advantage of, but um, it's so, it can be so helpful. If get you your foot through a door, 100%. Yeah, and I did that with a couple of like famous people as well. Like I did free work for a, a, a drum and bass artist called Brucey, made one free video and then started working with him, went on tour with him. And, <laughs> and uh, same thing with the uh, cricketer Joffre Archer. But I suppose same thing with YouTube. YouTube in itself is a business. You are making content for free for them. And then you do enough free videos that they start paying you eventually. So, you know, you're just knocking you're just, you're just knocking on the door. You're just putting you're getting your yeah. Putting your foot through. And that's a great point because I think nowadays 
some slash a lot of creators get into YouTube for the wrong reasons. They, <laughs> they think it's like a money grab because um, it can pay very well. Uh, but I would say like you need to love making YouTube videos because there will be a time where you're like, oh, you know, I really don't want to make that video, mm -hmm. but you absolutely love videos. And if it's like, yeah, like I absolutely love making videos. So there's nothing that would stop me. So um, really, you got to love your niche. You got to love your videos and you can't be doing it for the money. Okay. Sate Padang Lida. Ooh. You open your eyes. I had this recently. You had what? Sate Padang? Uh, yeah. But have you tried Sate Padang Lida? I'm not sure. It looks a little bit spicy. Looks delicious though. This looks spicy for you. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not very good at looking and judging spice, but. This is like a long, long tong? Yep, that's yeah, long tong. Yeah. This is like satay sauce. Sauce sauce, yeah, bang on. This is chicken. It's and not chicken. Pork? No. It's actually sapi, cow. Beef. Beef. I don't eat beef. No, I'm joking. I was, was going <laughs> to say, actually, on my show a few, a few, a few months ago, I had a Hindu, my good mate Rai, he's Hindu, yeah. and I gave him <laughs> beef, and the cow's considered really holy in, in yeah. Hindu. Okay, anyway, have you, are, you, I... are you aware of sauce? Yeah, I have it all the time. You have satay all the time? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever had satay lida? No. Okay. Don't think so. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You may tuck in. You may try it. With my hands? Yeah, just grab, grab. I'm grab. Gonna grab some of the beef. Oh, chewy. Hearty. Is it the ankle? Yeah. Oh. Oh, that sauce is good. It's spicy, though. It's spicy? I would say that's spicy. What, like good spice or yeah, not? Yeah, Just at the top of my limit of comfortableness. Okay, but I mean, you've travelled around the world now. You've been to India, Nepal, I Pakistan. Know. You must be quite good at spice now. I am. I feel like I am, but Indonesia is definitely one of the top. I'd say the top was Sri Lanka in terms really? of spice. Yeah, spiciest stuff I've ever had. India, like, I don't, maybe it's the places I went, they, they didn't serve me that many spicy stuff. I love this, like I've never had this long tong. Is that how you say it? Long, long this, tong? This is just called long tong, yeah. Yeah, I've never had this before, but it's so interesting, like the texture. You've never had it with your satay ever? No, 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 I'm outside of Indonesia. Mmm. Mmm. Right. Delicious. That is absolutely delicious. So this is, this is personally one of my favorite, this is my favorite satay. No, this is my top two favorite satays in Indonesia. Yeah. My favorite is satay Madura. Have you heard of Madura? This is like an island just off Java. Madura. And Madura. <laughs> Next is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is delicious. Next is, next is Surabaya. And, oh God, it is spicy, isn't it? Yeah, I told you. See? <laughs> okay. And satay Padang, which is this dish. We haven't got the same satay. You've got satay Lida. I've got satay Sapi. Okay. Sapi means cow. Lida is a part of something. Oh, you and your different body parts. <laughs> is it the... But you, Don't wait. tell me. I want to finish it after. Yeah. I want to enjoy it because I'm not going to eat it if you're going to tell me like it's cow testicles or something. <laughs> but are you, do you like it? Yeah, like it's quite fatty. Like it's not amazing, but mm -hmm. it's it's nice. The sauce is really delicious. Mm -hmm. So I just picked this up from a guy on the side of the street who sells satay. Oh really? Yeah, it's called the satay padang Changu. Mm -hmm. That's literally the name. So, Harry, what is your rating out of ten for the satay padang? Um, Six point five. Seven. 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 Seven out of ten. It's, it's just the, the meat is not amazing, but the, the sauce is... I'd say the sauce is like a nine, okay. but the, the meat brings it down. <laughs> do, do you wish I had like chicken or pork? Yeah, yeah, a bit of chicken would be delicious, a bit of pork, but... Mm -hmm. hey. Well, my one is absolutely delicious. <laughs> Mine is satay sapir. This is just beef. This is, this is just beef. You're actually eating cow tongue. Is it? Cow tongue, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's decent. It's not bad. But, yeah, cow tongue. Never had cow tongue before. Yeah. Well, so I'm like kissing the tongue now. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I mean, it's probably it's one of the most popular parts of, of the cow for the salsa, yeah. Is it expensive? Um, it's not that expensive, but they love it in, in Padang. 
So if you go on, to, if you go actually order it on Grab, it's right at the top of the menu. And normally, what's at the top is the most popular. I've yeah, I've ordered this before. Uh, don't think I, I got chicken instead of. Can you get this with chicken? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've ordered this with chicken before, thinking it was I was getting like a chick, normal chicken satay, but. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, pleasantly surprised. No, okay. so Harry, is this an Enac or is it a Dinac? I'd say Enac. Enac, <laughs> even though you now know what it's a cow tongue. Yeah, honestly, that doesn't put me off actually. Really? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. it doesn't put me off. I mean, it's not like it's just like not. You know, I'm I'm looking for a bit more protein. Yeah, uh, I'll go to the gym, so I need more. <laughs> Mate, we're just ticking all the boxes for our Indonesian goal followers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wearing a shirt, nice new haircut. Guys, I'm looking for an Indonesian wife. Oh, but, there we go, <laughs> and willing to convert as well. Mm. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Absolutely. All right, that's a, that's a food section done. Do you want to finish it? Or you... I'll have a bit more of this. Actually, no, I'll get my protein in. Back to, back to whatever this thing is. My mouth is on fire right now. <laughs> Mine too. Uh, you, um, yeah, yeah. Just, a bit of water. Should I get an iced tea for you? Or? No, no, I'm good, thank you. A lot spicier than I thought it would be. Fuck me. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not the only one saying it's spicy. I mean, we are both just as, as well, we're from England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're not really used to, to, to well, apart from like a tikka masala or pizza, we're not really used to this sort of cuisine. Anyway, back to back to this thing. AI. Ooh, now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Does that? What's the first thing that comes to mind when I say AI? Exciting. Really. You're excited for it. You're I'm not, excited. You're not. You're not worried about it. I think there are elements of it that are a little bit scary, but I'm 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 super excited. I think I've spoken to a lot of people like and there's like. Some people are like, oh my God, it's like the new internet. And then some people are like, it's very much like still in its beginner stage. It's not that powerful. But for me, from a content creator's point of view, I think it's fascinating, incredible. It's made some of my YouTube titles, which have performed really well. So at this point, it's just helping me. And, you know, I guess it will, uh, it could and probably will take away a lot of jobs. Um, for people. However, it's the same with the internet and the internet took a lot of jobs. The agricultural revolution, the industrial revolution, it's the same thing. So I feel like, yeah, if you use it to your advantage, it's golden and anyone who's not using it, I would really recommend to use it. For me, it was a little bit like, I felt like a bit of a, a boomer using it. I was like, you know, how, how does this work? Like you have to input uh, questions and stuff, but the more you use it, the more you learn about it and, and how to properly use it, not just type in questions, you've got to really feed it the right information. Mm -hmm. And I use it now for my YouTube YouTube descriptions, for some comments. I actually just talk to you through AI. <laughs> 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 All my Instagram DMs. This no. podcast right now is yeah, yeah, AI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just have a script here. from my AI machine. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I use it for these uh, things and also like deciding what countries to go to sometimes. Like actually, uh, there's a country I'm going to this is coming out in a few months, so I can talk about my mm -hmm. future countries. Yeah, so I'm going to go to Papua New Guinea because AI said it was a good country to go wow. to. Wow. Yeah. And is, is that going to be feature, are you featuring that in the video? Probably not, but I will be doing some videos surrounding AI. Like, I'm going to Vietnam, mm -hmm. and uh, in my first video, I'm planning to... The, the, the challenges within the video will be AI-related. Um, they're gonna like the AI is gonna give me some challenges. Today. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm just using it like experimenting. Um, what else do I use it for? Wait, I, I love how I just I, all I said was two letters AI, <laughs> and then you just like poof, you just completely exploded. I know, and I'm not like a tech nerd at all. <laughs> I'm not at all. But yeah, it's definitely exciting for me. And are you gonna? Do you see yourself integrating it into your like video editing? Because you've already said you you started creating your titles of it. Do you see yourself potentially in the future just putting your content into uh, Premiere Pro, whatever editing software you use, and just cutting the whole thing for you? That's a great question. I know people that are making short form videos of my style um, with AI, and it subtitles it all for you. However, I'm not willing to do that right now because it completely loses all the creativity and the videos are just not that good. Maybe at some point it'll become good. There are also some features where you can get it to recreate your voice and then maybe in the future it can recreate a, a visual image from you. So you could just set up a second channel where it's like Lawrence Benson talking about countries 
in Asia, and it won't even be you. It will be a, a machine. So there's so much potential, but um, yeah, no, I'm not sure at the moment. Okay. So I, you kind of answered it already, but like with AI coming about, there's going to be far, I feel like there's going to be far more channels, maybe channels which, just don't, which don't even feature people. And I'm about to suggest there's going to be far more competition for us on YouTube and on TikTok. What are you doing to adapt with a shift in, in content? What, like, are, you, are you having to adapt your, your style of content? or I'm not changing my color, style of content. I feel like at AI, it would be ridiculous for it to create content that is my style of creativity. I mean, def definitely in the future, potentially a long, a long way down the line, but I think um, people, no matter how good the AI is, people will always crave the real connection, the emotion, the storyline that you can get from watching a real person on the screen. And I don't know how good AI is gonna be at recreating that. Also, obviously there'll be, the verification tick will be very important. Um, I just feel like the AI is not going to be that good. Um, it will be very good, very entertaining, I'm sure. But um, to make a full-on vlog, I'm not sure right now. So I feel like in your position, you're in a strong position because your content is very personality-based. Mm. It's like you, people watch your videos because of, for you, Harry Jaggard, places where you go to and the people who you interact with. Well, I suppose with my videos, for example... The main focus, I would say, is food. And AI could easily kind of replace that. So my direction personally is I'm trying to do more videos where it's, I'm showing my face, like, like I am now. <laughs> like I am now, hello guys. Um, so I'm just curious, do you feel like people make, putting their face on the camera more is important more than ever now yeah. than ever before? Yeah, that's a great point. I, I didn't really think about like the talking head style of videos. They can definitely be recreated, like anything educational also. So I'd say, yeah, get your personality out there. Obviously, it's hard. If you're very first starting for the first time, it's really hard to, you know, be your true personality on camera. But that's why I said you got to practice. And um, yeah, definitely get your face on camera. Um, I, I don't know many videos that are going to do well without someone's face on, but... Um, yeah, I'd say definitely just get out there, make videos. And um, people are always like wanting to see results so quick. But if you just make every video better than the last video, you will see results. If you build it, they will come. Yeah, sure. So you're, you're a YouTuber. That's what I, would, I see you as. You're, you're a YouTuber. And I feel like when people think of the term YouTuber, they think, oh, he, he just makes videos. That's... that's that's all, all you do. But I mean, the skills you've developed along this journey, there's far more than just creating videos. You've created a business. You're, you're running your own business. You are, you've, you're a presenter. You are, you are managing all the logistics. You're managing this whole operation going mm. on. Like, what are the key skills that you've learned over, in, over the past year and a half? I'd say like, the number one is just general competence, just being able to travel to places and, and know exactly what to do, where to, you know, if there's a problem, if there's a major problem, like just knowing what to do. Also like leadership, now I have uh, two employees and it's, you know, very easy, like I'm very relaxed, um, maybe too relaxed sometimes, but I said, yeah, leadership as well. And like initiative, just like general, you know, like being a YouTuber can be a little bit lonely at times because, you know, you have no employees, uh, as in like no um, friends like working with you. Uh, I don't have anyone like filming my videos for me. So I feel like you become very um, comfortable in your own company and competent in your own company. You know, there's, you know, I don't need anyone to help me with anything really. You, you um, can't, you also can't blame anyone if things go wrong. Exactly. It's 100% your responsibility. Yeah, 100%. And, and so many people will be like, oh, you know, the algorithm, I think I'm, I think I'm banned, I'm shadow banned. It's like, no, the only reason, I, I, this sounds a bit harsh, but the only reason your video is not doing well is because it doesn't have high watch time and it doesn't have high clicks. Like this, this is it, that's the only reason. Fact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't say that you're shadow banned, but of course I've made that excuse on, on, on TikTok sometimes and it's very easy to blame other people, but that's, uh, and also like sometimes I make a video and it's like 10 out of 10 and I'm like, you know, it's, it's this reason why. And it's like, no, it's my 100% my responsibility. Yeah. 
Like what happens if you're having a really bad patch in terms of like maybe you're down or something's not, things just seem to be going wrong. How do you like, you know, what's your motivation to keep going? What, what is it for you? <laughs> so I, the, 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 the biggest reason for like why I feel down is when I get ill. And obviously I go to South Asia, I go to India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, like I'm get, I get food poisoning every time I go, at least once, whenever I go, every single time. I don't get it in Bali because my stomach is so strong now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when I, like when I'm ill from that, it's literally like, I want to quit YouTube. Like, am I really cut out for this? Like, it's just, I feel, just feel so terrible. And I guess I just keep telling myself that like, you know, good luck going back to your old job and enjoying that. And, and sometimes like I, I've actually, I used to drive an hour to, to work and I would like sometimes Google the, Google the, the drive and be like, you want to do that drive every day? Uh, just to, like make it visual and like be like, no, like, and, and then once I'm, I'm, I'm healthy again, I'm like, okay, yeah, and I was being stupid. Like I really, there's literally no other job that I could do in the world. I feel like I was, I was, uh, I just love making YouTube videos. That's interesting you said that because like one of my, at the time I hated it. So I used to work, I used to work in a cafe whilst doing all this videography stuff and I had lots of friends who were traveling, you know, living in Bali, living in Dubai, all around the world. And it was me working on like seven pounds an hour, working in a cafe, washing the dishes. And I suppose that was one of my really, my main driving forces to, when I'm, when I'm having like a bad day, I'm thinking, do I really want to be washing dishes again in this cafe? And I think it's actually really important to have those things in the back of your mind or have those, those bad, for me, it was, it was an okay experience, but I, I know I never wanted to live my life doing that. Do you feel like if you didn't have that experience working as um, <laughs> driving an hour to work? And yeah, it was it, like finance. Yeah, doing, doing that sort of stuff. Do you feel like if you didn't have those experiences, you wouldn't be as far ahead now? Yeah. I, are, you, are you grateful that those mm, experiences happened for you? 100%. And also, I would say growing up, my parents didn't really give me anything. Like, um, I, it sounds really stupid, but when I was in sixth form in like 18, 19, all my friends were like getting a car. Their parents bought them a car. My parents couldn't afford to buy me a car. And I was like really annoyed. I was like, I really want a car because I live in a small village away from everyone. So I was like, you know, this is so unfair, but I'm so glad my parents didn't buy me the car because it made me go out and get a job. I worked at Waitrose, saved up for a car, and then I actually crashed it and totaled it in, in the first two weeks. But <laughs> we'll forget about that. Um, but the fact is, I worked to get the car. And I realized, my parents made me realize that you have to work for something to get it. And that is like, I'm so happy. And that's why, you know, like my children, I'm going to do the same. Okay. Harry, I think we are finished. Thank you so much. No, um, Harry, thank you so no. much. It's truly inspiring is what you've achieved in the past year and a half is truly inspiring for not just for me, but so many people. And I just hope you can carry on and, you know, explore the unexplored, inspire people to quit the nine to fives, people back in Coventry. <laughs> and I'm sure this career is a possibility. This is just the very start. As we were talking about AI earlier, AI is the worst it's ever been. And it's only going to keep growing. So if you can integrate it into content, then the the ceiling is it's never ending yeah yeah i agree 100 percent. there's so many opportunities right now exactly uh not just in youtube people think like i mean instagram is kind of dying but uh tiktok is i go to countries and people say are you they don't ask me if i'm a youtuber they say are you a tiktoker <laughs> so it just goes to show that tiktok is really really powerful mm -hmm. as much as i don't like i don't have it on my phone i don't really like it <laughs> but um it's definitely a, a tool that can be used to create uh, a good life and yeah Thank you so much for having me also, and congratulations for a million. <laughs> and uh, yeah, big up, brother. Mate, you're soon going to be hitting it. You're, you, you've, <laughs> just, you've already passed 500k. Your videos are all blowing up. So guys, check out Harry Jagger on YouTube, on Facebook, yeah. on Instagram. <laughs> Wait, he's going to be all over. So Harry, thank you once, once again. Thank and you, brother. Yeah, Makasi. It's been a pleasure. Terra Makasi. <laughs>